Hey guys, uh, question number 9, Gauss Law, uh, chapter number 23. Let me read out the question. A small charged ball lies within a hollow of a metallic spherical shell of radius r uh, for three situations. The net charge on the ball and the shell respectively are first situation plus 4q and 0, second situation minus 6q and plus 10q and then uh, uh, third situation plus 16q and minus 12q. Rank the situations according to the charge on part A, the inner surface of the shell and part B, uh, the outer surface, most positive first, okay, most positive first. So, uh, So what we have here is a spherical shell, a conducting spherical shell of radius r, meaning the thickness is very small, okay, thickness is very small. Then we have some charge at the center and some charge on the spherical shell. And we have to see what will be the charge on the inner surface of the shell and what will be the charge on the outer uh, surface of the shell. And then we are given three situations and we have to rank the three situations according to the charge on the inner shell and according to the charge on the outer shell. Now first I'll talk about the result. Uh, Gauss law. Gauss law uh, we know flux through a closed surface which is given by integral E dot dA, surface integral of uh, electric field, dA is the area element, is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Again from Gauss law, we have something regarding metals. Uh, field inside uh, metallic body is always 0. Inside the meat of the metal, inside the material of the metal is 0. So if we have this metallic body, all of it is filled with the material of the metal, then feel inside it is always zero, always zero. Whatever the charge distribution, electrostatic field inside the meat of the metal is always zero. If we have a metallic body with some cavity, with some cavity, so this is meat of the metal and there is this cavity, then one thing we can be sure of is that electric field inside the meat of the metal is zero. Inside this meat of the metal is zero. Inside the cavity, well, it depends if we have any charge there and all that. But inside the meat of the metal, electric field is always zero. Okay, electric field is always zero. Now, one important result from that, which we get uh, after using this equation. If we have a Gauss surface, this is a Gaussian surface. If every part of the Gaussian surface is, if every point of the Gaussian surface is lying inside the metal, inside the meat of the metal, then at every point of the Gaussian surface electric field is zero. And if electric field at every point of the Gaussian surface is zero, then all of it becomes zero. That means flux through that surface is zero. That means charge enclosure through that surface is zero. So charge enclosure by this Gaussian surface is zero. When all of it is lying inside the meat of the metal. When every point of the Gaussian surface is lying inside the meat of the metal, flux through that is zero because electric field is zero at every point. So charge enclosed by such a surface is zero. Charge enclosed by such a surface is zero. So I'm going to use this result for, for this question. If all the, all the points of the Gaussian surface are inside the meat of the metal, then charge enclosed by it is, it is zero. And then uh, uh, flux, Flux through a closed surface is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0, meaning it's directly proportional to Q enclosed. So now we have a charged ball and a, a hollow sphere. Uh, I'm showing a very thick uh, spherical shell. This red one I'm taking as a spherical shell and this yellow one I'm taking as a charged ball at the center. I'm taking a very thick spherical shell just to put my forward, a point forward, otherwise uh, this is a thin shell. Uh, this white one is the Gaussian surface, Gaussian surface. All of it is lying inside the meat of the metal. All of it is lying within the red portion, which is the meat of the metal, okay, which is the meat of the metal. Now, uh, in the first case, in the first case, charge of the shell Charge of the shell is zero. Charge of the shell is zero. So let's see what is charge on the inner surface of the shell and what is charge on the outer surface of the shell. 
keeping in mind that total charge of the shell is zero. So if charge on the inner shell is suppose Q inner, if charge on the inner shell is Q inner, then if we use Gauss surface, charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface is 4Q plus 4Q plus Q inner. But that charge enclosed must be zero. Charge enclosed must be zero because all of it is lying within the metal. So all of the Gaussian surface is lying within the metal. Okay, all of the Gaussian surface is lying within the metal. So total charge enclosed, which is plus 4Q plus Q inner, that must be zero. So charge enclosed must be equal to zero. Uh, from here, we know charge enclosed is Q inner plus 4Q. And this must be equal to zero. Okay, this must be equal to zero. So from here, we have Q inner is equal to minus 4q. Q inner is equal to minus 4q. Note one point, we did not consider total charge of the spherical shell. It does not matter what is total charge of the spherical shell. All that matters is what is charge lying inside the shell. Inner surface will get a charge which is basically the inducer charge will get a charge which is equal and opposite to that of the charge lying inside it equal and opposite it does not depend on the total charge of the spherical shell irrespective of the total charge of the spherical shell charge on the inner surface is minus 4q charge on the inner surface is minus 4q now what is charge on the outer surface okay what is charge on the outer surface well we know charge of the shell which is equal charge on the outer surface plus charge on the inner surface and that must be equal to zero. Now we are considering that total charge on the shell. Okay, that total charge is given is zero. So which simply means Q outer charge on the outer shell must be equal to negative of Q inner and Q inner is minus 4Q, negative of minus 4Q is plus 4Q. So charge on the inner surface of the shell is minus 4q charge on the outer surface of the shell is plus 4q okay is plus 4q so this is the first situation okay this is the first situation let me highlight it here now q inner for the future reference q inner is minus 4q and q outer is plus 4q Okay, is plus 4q. Now, let's first go for the out uh, for the second situation. Well, in the second situation, uh, the charge of the ball is minus 6q. Okay, charge of the ball is minus 6q and charge of the shell is plus 10q. Charge of the shell is plus 10q. Okay, is plus 10q. Now, let's consider charge on the inner surface of the shell to be q inner and charge on the outer surface of the shell to be Q outer. Let's consider the same Gaussian surface. This is the Gaussian surface. Charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is Q inner minus 6Q, but that has to be zero because all of the Gaussian surface is lying within the meat of the metal, within the red portion, within the meat of the metal. So charge enclosed by Gaussian surface, which is Q inner, minus 6q, this must be equal to 0. What is total charge of the spherical shell has nothing to do with this equation. It doesn't matter what is total charge of the spherical shell. All that matters is charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is 0, which simply means q inner is equal to plus 6q. Again, charge on the inner shell is equal and opposite to that of charge within the shell. Charge within the shell is minus 6q. So charge on the inner shell is plus 6q. Equal and opposite. Okay, equal and opposite. So this is charge on the inner shell. Now, now, charge of the shell, which is charge on the inner surface of the shell plus charge on the outer surface of the shell, that is equal to plus 10q. That is given. That is equal to plus 10q. So this implies charge on the outer shell is equal to plus 10q minus q inner. Minus q inner and q inner is plus 6q plus minus is minus minus 6q. So this is equal to plus 4q.
So Q outer is equal to plus 4Q and Q inner is equal to plus 6Q. Let me write that uh, for the future reference. So Q inner is equal to Q inner is equal plus 6Q and Q outer is equal to plus 4Q plus 4Q. Okay. Then we have a third situation. Third situation charge on the ball is plus 16Q and charge on the shell is minus 12Q. So charge on the shell charge on the shell is minus 12Q minus 12Q. So let's suppose charge on the inner surface of the shell is Q inner and charge on the outer surface of the shell is Q outer. Let's consider again the Gaussian surface. All every part of the Gaussian surface is lying within the meat of the metal. So Q enclosed must be zero and Q enclosed is plus 16 Q plus Q inner. So that must be equal to zero. So Q enclosed by the Gaussian surface, which is Q inner plus 16 Q. This must be equal to zero. Okay, this must be equal to zero. Again, you see total charge of the shell does not matter. Okay, total charge of the shell does not matter. It does, we don't consider that anywhere. So Q inner is equal to minus 16 Q. Okay, Q inner is equal to minus 16 Q. Again, equal and opposite to that of the charge lying inside the shell. Equal and opposite to that. What is total charge of the shell does not matter. Charge of the outer surface does matter on what is total charge on the shell, but ch charge on the inner shell does not matter on the total charge of the shell. Okay, now, charge of the shell is equal to charge on outer shell surface of the shell plus charge on inner surface of the shell and that total charge is minus 12Q minus 12q so this means charge on the outer surface of the shell is minus 12q minus q inner q inner is minus 16q so minus minus is plus plus 16q so this is equal to plus 4q charge on the outer surface is equal to plus 4q so let me write it here q inner is equal to minus 16q and q outer is equal plus 4q is equal plus q so we have q inner what charge on the inner surface of the shell in all the three cases and charge on the outer surface of the shell in all the three cases so uh, case one q inner q outer case two q inner q outer case three q inner q outer In the first case, Q inner is minus 4Q and plus 4Q, minus 4Q and plus 4Q, minus 4Q and plus 4Q. Then in the second case, plus 6Q and plus 4Q, plus 6Q and plus 4Q, plus 6Q and plus 4Q. And then in the third case, minus 16Q and plus 4Q, minus 16Q and plus 4q yeah plus 4q so let's do the ranking let's go for the ranking first for the q inner so part a for q inner we have to rank the surfaces according to the charge on the inner surface most positive first that would mean most negative at the last okay so Q inner is minus 4Q, Q inner is plus 6Q, Q inner is minus 16Q. Most positive is the second one. So second one greater than lesser negative and then the most negative. Okay. So it is kind of you have to write the three charges in the decreasing order, but including their sign, considering their sign also. So plus 6Q is greater than minus 4Q, which is situation 1, and is greater than minus 16Q, which is situation 3. So most positive first, and most negative at the end, at the last. 
So Q inner uh, ranking of the charge on the inner surface is 2 greater than 1 greater than 3. Now what about Q outer? Again most positive first. Okay. Most positive first. Plus 4Q plus 4Q plus 4Q. So it is same in all the three cases. So 1 equals 2 equals 3. Okay. 1 equals 2 equals 3. So uh, charge on the inner surface 2 is greater than 1 is greater than 3. Uh, with most positive being the first one being the greatest and uh, most negative at the end and uh, for charge on the outer surface is same in all the three cases so simple application of gauss law if we know gauss law this should be easy fine okay